So we've talked a lot about Newton's second law, like we've spent a lot of videos on it, and that is no, that, that's basically to say that Newton's second law is so important, like we cannot emphasize it enough. We're going to kind of shift gears a little bit. This is something in a Physics 20 class, I would never expect you to get this on the first shot or even the first several shots at this. This is something we're going to develop or at least introduce you to in Physics 20 and really build it up in Physics 30. And this is the process of curve straightening. What you're going to find is that a lot of the data that we look at in physics, it's not actually linear. You know, it may be quadratic, it may be inverse, it may be inverse square. And if you've taken like things like math 20-1 or 30-1 or even 30 math 31, you'll learn how to deal with those more advanced functions. But in a physics 20 class and a physics 30, we really only going to assume that you have math 10c. And math 10c basically sticks with linear functions. How we used to do this in physics 20, 30 years ago is we used to give you data and you had to figure out how to plot it to get a straight line. We're still going to do some stuff like that. But what I'm going to show you is more what you could expect on exams, especially in a physics 30 class. So what's going to happen is you are going to be given data you are going to be given the data points and on an exam to mimic kind of what the diploma does you will also be given a line of best fit so with this data this straight line and this line of best fit what they're asking what they're going to ask you is to calculate the value of some quantity based on what you have graphically now this is a tough thing to do and like i said we're going to just kind of introduce it slowly here and there you will get more exposure to it in the course later and especially in physics 30. So with this whole process is what we call curve straightening. Here's the gist and we're going to do an example together and I'll go through these steps explicitly. So based on the graph that you have or the written context provided you need to actually figure out what equation you're investigating. Once you know the equation you're investigating you need to figure out what is on the y-axis of your graph and on the x-axis of your graph and in that equation, you want to isolate for the y variable. Most of the time, that's already done for you. If not, you have to do it. Once you isolate for the y variable, you want to take what's on your x-axis of the graph, and you want to take that variable in your equation. You want to separate that out from everything else. And you're going to put the remaining terms in brackets. What you should hopefully be able to do is you should be able to match this to the form y equals mx plus b y and x, these are already going to be given and you're going to get these from the graph. What you're trying to figure out is what is the slope equal to and in some cases you may be interested in the y-intercept. Most times in physics, about 95% of the time, it's the slope you actually care about. It's very rare the y-intercept is going to be of interest because in a lot of the equations we study, the y-intercept is theoretically zero. In physics 30, when you do lenses and mirrors, when you do the lens equation, that's one where the y-intercept actually matters, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So I'm going to show you how one of these questions, what it looks like, how we'd approach it, and like I said, we're going to build on this skill. This is not something I'd expect you to get on day one. This is a really tough skill. So we have a graph of acceleration as a function of net force, and it's shown below for a truck. So we have acceleration as a function of net force. So it's asking us based on this to determine the mass of the truck expressed in scientific notation. Okay, this is a little bit of a trickier question, but no need to fear. We can do this. We're going to do this methodically in steps. So this first step is we have to determine the equation for this problem. Well, we're talking about net force. We're talking about acceleration. This is most likely going to be Newton's second law. And we know Newton's second law. We know that we have the net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So we have an equation, and this has everything that's given or we need. F net's plotted on the x-axis, A is plotted on the y-axis, and we're asked to determine mass. This equation's perfect. Now, what we want to do is we want to isolate for the y variable. Well, on this graph, we actually have the acceleration on the y-axis and we have the net force on the x-axis. What this means is we actually have to slightly adjust our equation here because we want to isolate for the y variable. We'd like to get a by itself, 
So in this equation, A is going to be the net force divided by M. So now we have Y equals something. So we're trying to work our way to Y equals MX plus B. We'd like to separate the X variable from the slope. Because we know y is equal to mx. We don't have a plus b here, so our y-intercept in theory is going to be 0. We want to separate the x variable, or f net, from everything else. So instead of writing a equals f net over m, I'm going to write a equals, and then I'm going to have my f net separated here. This is still my x. But separated from that, I'm going to have this 1 over m term. Now, 1 times f net will give me f net. m times, there's no denominator here, but it's explicitly 1. That is going to give us m. So this is still f net over m. This is just written in a slightly different way. And then we could also tack on a plus 0 here. So if we look at this very carefully, this very much looks like something of the form y equals slope times x plus b. What we can do is we can relate that equation. So we know that the y variable is the acceleration, and we know x is the net force. This is given already. We got this from the graph. What we're told in this graph is we're told that the slope of this graph, it's going to be equal to 1 over the mass. And then we're also told that the y-intercept is 0. That's great. I'm just going to say this is not important. And I don't mean that it's like it's not important, it's just we don't need it to do the rest of the question. What we know though is that the slope is equal to 1 divided by the mass. So before we get to that though, we actually have to look at our graph and we need to determine the slope. The big thing is always whenever you're doing questions with slope and lines of best fit, you need to take two points off the line of best fit. You don't pick two data points, we pick points on the line of best fit. So I need to identify two points that I can easily read. So I'm going to pick this point here. I'm going to mark it with an X. And I'm also going to pick, oh, which point do I want to pick here? I think I'm going to pick this point here. It looks pretty easily readable. What I like to do as well is I like to actually label the points. So I like to label the X, Y values. So this point here, based on our scale, this is going to be 3.6. Notice that multiplier here though. So all of these values are multiplied by 10 to the 3. And that's a big mistake that students make with these questions. They forget those multipliers. And then on my y-axis here, I'm going to have about 1.8 meters per second squared. I also like to have the units. That certainly, like, that certainly helps me in the end here. All right, next part, or next point. So I get this point way up here. This is going to be located at about 10.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons. And then this has an acceleration if I go back. So each of these spacings represents 0.4 meters per second squared. So this should be about 4.80 meters per second squared. So I have two data points. I can certainly label this. I can say this is x1, y1. This is x2 and y2. So we're going to find the slope based on those two data points. So the slope is going to be this y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we're going to take the slope of those two data points. On these type of questions here, I have chosen these data points. You may have chosen a slightly different set of data points. And that's perfectly fine. We're allowed to have different data points. Our slopes should be reasonably close to one another. They shouldn't be wildly different. So that's OK if we get the slopes a little bit different. You have to be given a tolerance. And what we mean by that is like we have to, I can find the exact answer based on the slope of the line of best fit here. And then I can calculate the mass using that. We have to say, as long as you're within a certain percentage of that, we're going to mark the answer correct. So you will be given a little leeway on this. and that's. Honestly, that's only fair. Right, so let's find out what this thing is going to be equal to this slope. So what I'm going to get, based on what I've chosen, I'm going to get it's about 4.4118. I'm not too worried right now about sig digs. Times 10 to the minus 4. Now we have meters per second squared. 
up top divided by newtons. What's that going to look like? I'm going to just kind of sketch it up here. So I got meters per second squared divided by a newton. Well, we know our definition of the newton is a kilogram times the meters per second squared. So the meters per second squared up top here, they're going to take care of that meters per second squared in the bottom. So what we have left is we have a kilogram, but it's in the bottom. So this is what we have left over. We have one over kilograms as our units, or we might say kilogram inverse. If you want to say one over kilograms, that's perfectly fine. So we want to now find the mass using this slope. Well, when we looked at y equals mx plus b, we said that the slope, we said that is equal to one over the mass. Or if we rearrange this for m, we know that m is gonna be one over the slope. What this is trying to tell us here is that the mass of this truck, it's gonna be one divided by the slope that we had just calculated. So we had just calculated that slope to be about 4.4118 times 10 to the minus four kilogram inverse. So when we invert this, I'm gonna get about oh, 2.27 times 10 to the 3 kilograms, if I express this in scientific notation. So this is what I'm getting. You got like 2.26, 2.25, 2.28, 2 2.29, not a problem. As I said, we're going to expect, we're going to give you a little tolerance on this one. Like we won't expect you to get the exact, exact answer. So we've expected our answer to be in the form of A dot B, C times 10 to the D kilograms. So I have my A, B, C, and then my D here. So if I was to properly input this as a numerical response, we're going to say this is 2, 2, 7, 3. And that's the gist of curve straightening. This is a really hard skill. If you kind of, we went through this, you're like, whoa, I don't understand what the hell is going on. Don't fret. This is something you're going to see a lot more before you're explicitly tested on it. This is just to kind of introduce you and get you used to it. This is not something we're going to expect you to know how to do right away. We'll build on this.